Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 23rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from London, England. Mobile security company Wondera came across some suspicious applications in Google's Play Store. Both applications they looked at are selfie apps. Essentially, applications that allow you to apply different filters to images before you upload them and both have permissions and are using these permissions to display ads. Of course, there are plenty of mobile applications that use advertisements to monetize the application itself. In this case, however, they're going a little bit further than just displaying simple ads. For example, this application creates a shortcut to itself and then deletes the actual application icon, making it more difficult to delete the actual application. If a user now deletes the shortcut, believing that they remove the application, well, they actually didn't. Next, the application also obtains the system alert window permission. This allows the application to display full page ads on the mobile device. And it does at least one of these application also ask for the receive boot completed permission, which allows it to launch itself once the phone is started. So in the end effect, what you end up with is an application that is hard to install and that will display full page ads after your phone booted. Now these applications had pretty bad ratings, but still somehow one and a half million users downloaded them. One of the problems may also be that probably for many users, the Android permission system is a little bit cryptic, so they tend to just click OK. In this case, the applications also ask for the record audio permission. It's not really clear why these applications are asking for record audio. This could almost be legitimate given that these applications are sort of at least recording pictures, maybe small movies and such with audio. But this could also be a hint at some not quite yet implemented spyware functionality. The two applications that Wondera analyzed are SunPro Beauty Camera as well as a Funny Sweet Beauty Camera. Now, most people who listen to this podcast are probably somewhat familiar with the Android permission permissions and would spot these odd permissions for everybody else. Well, look at the ratings. Don't just download an application just because a lot of other users downloaded it. And then we got a couple of updates to talk about. First of all, Wireshark. Now, usually I don't mention every single Wireshark update. What's a little bit different about this particular Wireshark update is that if you run Wireshark on Windows, you may first have to uninstall the NPCAP library. This is the successor of the WinPCAP packet capture library that Wireshark started to use and due to a bug in this library, you may actually get crashes if you don't uninstall this first. Refer to Wireshark's release notes for details. And Avid Sasson with Unit 42 at Palo Alto found an interesting vulnerability in Harbor. Harbor is what's called a cloud native registry. What essentially does, it takes your Docker images, it stores them, it can also sign them and then scan them for vulnerabilities. So it's one of those middleware pieces that people who like Docker and similar technologies like to use. The problem here is that it doesn't properly properly authenticate the user that's trying to set up a new user in the system. The problem is that Harbor will accept a user object and then instantiate it, uh, not considering that the user object submitted may already have the has admin role property set. So it's almost one of those insecure deserialization vulnerabilities, but what really happens here is that an attacker is now able to set up arbitrary users, make them administrator. Once the attacker has an administrator, then of 
Of course, at that point, they have full control to everything that Harbor does. Now, to fix this issue, don't we need to patch? There is a configuration setting that will prevent this from happening, but by default, it's not enabled. So check uh, with the workaround. And there's also a patch available if you don't have the latest version of Harbor installed yet. Well, and that's it for today. If you happen to be in London this week and if you're attending the SANS event here, stop by as usual. I always carry a couple of Internet Storm Center stickers with me. That's it for today. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.